Hi everyone, I'm Malin for those of you who don't know me and right now I'm on the way to my local market to stock up on some produce and I thought I'd take you with me because a few of you have been asking me to talk more about seasonal produce and what I like to do with it so that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take you along to the market, stock up on the produce, bring it all home and then show you exactly what I got and what I'm intending to do with it or what I like to cook with late summer seasonal produce and obviously I'm in Sweden in the northern hemisphere so it will be um sort of tailored to where I am so just keep that in mind and all the recipe ideas that I'm sharing with you I will link in the description box if you want to make them at home and some of them will be from my website and some will be from other sites but I just want to show you all the beautiful foods you can use now in the late summer to create yummy plant-based dishes so I have my bags on the ready I'm ready to go so let's go from the market now and I've laid everything out here on the table so that you can see everything we got and I'm gonna take you through everything bit by bit and explain what we like to make with it but before I do that I just want to say that not all of these things are grown outside in Sweden for example aubergines peppers they have to be grown in a greenhouse and in, in our cooler climate and I think actually that the aubergines and peppers that I got today are from the Netherlands but um, yeah you can find aubergines from Sweden for example during this time of year I just wanted you to know that that uh, not everything is uh, locally sourced but with that said let's get into all the beautiful produce and I want to start by talking a little bit about fresh herbs because summer is the season here in Sweden at least in northern Europe when we can uh, enjoy locally grown fresh herbs and uh, their season is coming to an end now in September or most of them at least at least these sort of finer leafy herbs so what I got this week is coriander or cilantro as you also call it and we love to eat this because we enjoy cooking South Asian, Southeast Asian food as well as Mexican food so we love to use it for that. We love to use it on top of tacos or in salsas, on top of chili and we also enjoy putting it in um, dolls and in a aubergine dish we make as well which I'll talk a little bit more about later but it's a great garnish for pretty much anything. <laughs> the other herb we got is fresh dill. It's my favorite herb I would say and I only really eat it in summer. Here in Sweden it's like the taste of summer at least I think so and I love to use it in salads uh, especially in potato salad and yeah I pretty much put this on everything in the summer. Rob gets quite sick of me. So leaving the herbs, obviously there are lots of other herbs in season at the moment as well, but these are the ones I picked up. We can jump over to tomatoes, which are also sort of going out of season now. They're at their they're at the end of the season as well and I love fresh tomatoes and my mom as well she would always buy Swedish tomatoes all summer long and I used to actually just eat them as a fruit they are actually a fruit and uh, yeah they're great for so many different things obviously you can put them in salads just chop them up put them put them in salads or slice them up and um, one favorite salad of mine is the one that my mom used to make that I shared in a video a few weeks back where you slice it up and you layer it with the onions and you put a little bit of dressing on so I'll definitely link that down below 
and also you can make lots of uh, other dishes with this of course where you cook them so one favorite that we have is a roasted tomato and garlic pasta which is super simple light and refreshing or fresh i should say maybe not refreshing and uh, that's one tip now towards the end of the summer to really utilize this beautiful vegetable and uh, it's also great together with other things which I will talk a little bit more about later on as well. So now that we have talked about a couple of things that are sort of coming to the end of their season we can talk about one that's uh, just coming into season and that's pumpkin. So I picked up two pumpkins today. I have a red curry uh, pumpkin, not curry like curry. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. K-U-R-I curry and also a kabocha squash and they are great for so many different dishes they're obviously delicious just roasted on a pan with some oil salt and pepper and served uh, as a side or with uh, like a buddha bowl or a nourish bowl or something like that they're also great for soups for stews for curries and uh, i also like to use them to make a sort of cheesy sauce for mac and cheese so usually i would make it with potato and carrot but when uh, pumpkins are in season it's it's really great to just steam them up and blitz them into a creamy sauce together with cashew nuts to have with your macaroni. It's a super nice dish when it now gets a little bit cooler and you just want something comforting and cozy. So moving on to cauliflower and both broccoli and cauliflower are in season right now but we chose cauliflower this week. We're really enjoying it at the moment and the price is pretty low so we're just uh, taking advantage I would say. One thing that we've really been enjoying to make with cauliflower is to cook it whole. So I actually do this in a pot now but I've also, I also have a recipe where you roast it in the oven and you baste it which gives it lots of flavor and it's such a nice nice thing to eat whole because it it just looks uh, decadent in a way and what we've been enjoying lately is to put a layer of hummus on a plate and then put the whole cauliflower on top some lemon zest maybe some dukkha which is a spice and uh, seed mix that has lots of flavor and yeah we just eat it like that maybe with a side of rice or some sort of grain and uh, it's super delicious another thing you can do with cauliflower is to cut it up into steaks so you just cut the core into slabs and then you can either pan fry them or you can roast them in the oven with a little bit of oil and seasonings and uh, yeah they're just a really delicious dish on their own again you could serve them with some sort of like chimichurri kind of herby sauce sauce, pesto, um, hummus again or some other sort of dip which is really nice and uh, other than that they're obviously also great for curries, great for roasting and florets uh, as a side and yeah, there's lots of things you can make with cauliflower. I've even made like a, a pasta alfredo with uh, cauliflower as the base for the sauce so yeah the, there's so much variety that you can do with cauliflower. I'm going to leave that aside and talk a little bit about cucumbers. I uh, love cucumbers in the summers. I love to just cut them into little do you say crudités I guess into little sticks <laughs> and dip them in dips or hummus as a snack and uh, recently I saw a friend of mine Sara from She's So Delicious you can check out her Instagram she made a smashed cucumber salad so that's something I really want to try this week and basically you just smash it up uh, that sounds really crazy but you do and then you make a dressing that sort of has soy sauce or uh, sesame oil and uh, vinegar to get a little bit of um, like an Asian flavor to it and uh, yeah it sounds delicious I can't wait to try it you can obviously also include cucumber in any number of salads you can shave it with a peeler to get ribbons you can chop it into small cubes you can slice it thin or thick I recently made a salad with cucumber and fennel and lemon and dill dill my favorite and uh, yeah I'll link that down below as well along with all the other recipe ideas another thing we like to make with cucumber that we've been making a lot lately is a 
South Asian street food. I think it's a street food, it's more like a snacky food, but we eat it for breakfast, lunch, dinner, not breakfast maybe, but you know what I'm saying. And it's chat, and you can make it with different bases, like chickpeas and potatoes are the ones we've tried. And then you chop up cucumber, onion, and tomatoes as well, so it's perfect for now. You should chop that up fine and mix it in, and coriander as well, so I think we're set up for another chat session here. And you mix it with some uh, chutneys and spices and uh, top it with some sieve. I made this in last uh, uh, the video from two weeks back, so if you want to see me uh, make it a little bit more in depth, you can check it out there. But it's yeah, it's super yummy, and uh, I hope you want to try it. So that's all about cucumber. Let's move on to this corner, and then I'll talk about fruit. So over here I have aubergine, eggplant, you can call it as well. I have courgette or zucchinis and I have peppers. And um, I realized that these sort of uh, like to hang out together in different dishes like caponata, which is an um, Italian dish where you cook them together and it's like a mushy, uh, yummy, stewy type thing. But they also go together in ratatouille along with tomatoes, which is something that I want to make uh, this week. So you roast the, the vegetables and then you cook them sort of in a tomato sauce and again it's like a stewy type thing that's really nice to eat with bread and yeah perfect for this time of year where you're using all these lovely fresh vegetables that are in season but cooking them in a way that's a little bit more hearty and warming as the evenings are getting cooler. Another thing we love to do with aubergine to going back to South Asia again is to make a dish called, I think it's called Bangan Barta, but I don't know if I'm saying that right whatsoever, but it's really yummy. You roast the um, aubergine or you can cook it over the flame so that it becomes really yummy and soft inside and gets a, if you do it over the flame, it gets like a smoky flavor as well, which is beautiful. And then you cook it with tomato and some spices, you add coriander to it and you mash it up. So you use only the inside and I don't actually usually like aubergine that much but this dish is just delicious and um, yeah we make that quite often in the summer. Another yummy thing you can make with aubergine is baba ganoush which is like a middle eastern dip that's really great if you're having like a messe with some other snacky foods eat it with bread on top of bread uh, yeah i really like it and i recently found out that you can make a version of it with courgette as well so you just roast the courgette and uh, until it's like soft and then you mix it with tahini, lemon juice, yogurt, obviously I use uh, plant yogurt, unsweetened, and some salt and uh, I think I'm forgetting something. But anyway, you blitz it up in a food processor and it makes this really yummy dip. So yeah, you have choices here. You can make it with aubergine, you can make it with crochet. Another yummy thing to do with crochet uh, that I did recently is to grill it or I just um, fried it in a griddle pan which by the way made a big smoke cloud in my kitchen and I did it on like the hottest day of the year so I was just sweating but uh, you don't need to do it when it's the hottest day and just create a smoke cloud but you just grill it uh, so that it has some nice lines and also it gives it that sort of charred flavor which is really nice and then I made a uh, dressing a lemony and parsley dressing that I through the grilled uh, slices of crochet into, mixed it up and then plated it up. I added some uh, cooked corn and right now fresh corn is delicious. So yeah, I'll get to that in a minute, but I added that on top and yeah. It was very yummy. I can re recommend doing this. And finally, this is a vegetable that is really versatile as well. I think all vegetables are really versatile, as you can tell. But you can roast it, you can eat it raw, um, and yeah, you can shave it again like the cucumber with a vegetable peeler. Then you get really beautiful ribbons that are perfect for salads. Obviously, if you have a spiralizer, it's really fun to spiralize. Tastes great as a salad with some pesto or some other kind of herby dressing like I said and uh, courgettes or I think you call this like a summer squash in America uh, yellow summer squash or something it comes in sort of different shapes I think this is a patty 
pan. I think I'm saying it right. So this is basically, or maybe not the same thing, but very similar. And it's really yummy, also just pan fried uh, with some garlic. And we tried it also with garlic and some white wine in the pan. It was really yummy as a side. And moving on to bell peppers, they're great in salads obviously, they're great roasted, roasted in soups, roasted in like dips and hummus. Uh, you can make, um, what's it called, romanesco with roasted peppers and some, I think it's flaked almonds that you toast and some other ingredients to make like a really nice dip or you can use it for pasta salads or something like that. We also love to use peppers in Hungarian dishes. Rob's mother is from uh, Hungary originally and has shown us a few dishes that she likes to make and bell peppers are like the foundation of um, uh, Hungarian cooking together with tomato and onion. So it's also a great time to cook Hungarian dishes. A while back uh, she actually came on the channel and cooked paprikash with me so I will definitely link that down below if you want to try some Hungarian food and uh, yeah they're also really versatile again like everything else you can chop them in salads obviously and they're also really good for barbecuing if you want to make skewers or something bell peppers courgettes really great for skewers maybe with some tofu or tempeh and uh, yeah that's my last tip for peppers I'm talking a lot but I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna hop over here to the sweet corn now and everyone who knows me uh, knows that I love sweet corn. I could eat this all day, every day. Uh, I just actually like to leave it in the husk and pop it in the oven. And then it means, or that makes it like cook inside the husk, which is cool. And I don't remember how long it takes because I always wing everything, but you put the oven on, you just pop them on a uh, a tray and you pop it into the oven and you wait patiently and then you can just eat the corn like that which I really enjoy or with a little bit of like vegan butter on obviously it's a classic maybe a little bit of salt Another cool thing that I want to try is to make uh, Mexican street corn or I think it's also called or I think it's called originally obviously elote I don't know if I'm saying that right but basically you put some mixture of uh, um, mayonnaise, vegan mayonnaise and vegan sour cream and usually with some cheese as well and some I think some spices maybe chili and and also lime and yeah I look forward to trying this I think we had it uh, once before but I can't quite remember so I just want to know what this tastes like because it sounds delicious to me you can obviously also use uh, sweet corn in in many different ways it's really great in salads like I said with the crochet earlier uh, roasted uh, bar barbecued as well, super yum obviously when it gets a bit charred. And I also really like to use it in soups. One uh, particular soup I have on the blog, I think I called it tortilla soup. It's like a Mexican inspired soup with black beans, obviously a tomato base, lots of yummy warming spices and sweet corn. And in that recipe I used frozen, but right now obviously you can use fresh, which has a lot of flavor usually and uh, you can obviously also make chowder but I've never actually made chowder myself but since I love sweet corn I'd love to try it sometime and uh, yeah we're nearing the end of my little haul here and I just bought a head of lettuce because in the summer here in Sweden you can get the most lovely crunchy beautiful green lettuce and uh, obviously the season for this kind of fresh lettuce here in Sweden is coming to an end because it's gonna get cold soon. <laughs> Anyways, I love salads. I, I uh, especially enjoy salads with this kind of crunchy lettuce. Another thing we like to make with uh, lettuce like this is to make lettuce cups and often actually when we have leftovers, especially if we made something like tacos or similar to that, then or actually messe as well is really good. I like to eat the leftovers in a lettuce leaf so I just make like a well I guess if it's taco leftover fillings then it's like having a taco in a lettuce leaf but you can pretty much put anything in a lettuce leaf and it will taste yummy especially if you have some sort of sauce on top or something like that 
especially good with like hummus or like I said that kind of baba ganoush you just smear that on the bottom of the lettuce leaf and then top it with whatever you have on hand some salad salsa uh, yeah whatever you put in there I think will be yum and now just I have two more items and it's fruits so I wanted to pick up some plums because that's um, coming into season right now or it's been in season for a little little while and it's obviously delicious but um, the ones they had they weren't that nice so I picked up some pears instead some Swedish pears that are just coming into season now and uh, yeah pears are yummy as a snack I'm sure you know that just eating it like this I really like it and actually it's full of fiber I, I found this out during my health coaching course that pears are like uh, such a fibrous fruit I think in one pear is like six grams of dietary fiber just a little fun fact uh, but um, yeah they're yummy on your breakfast bowl chopped up you can make compote like the same way you can make apple compote or applesauce you can make pear sauce and pear compote um, apples are also coming into season at the moment by the way so you can mix them and make an apple and pear compote <laughs> but um, obviously also really yummy in crumbles uh, yeah I don't really quite know what else to say about pears they're delicious <laughs> and uh, I also picked up some blackberries well, which will be the last item on my list today they're in season uh, right now and you can pick them wild in uh, the forests here in Sweden or even like by the side of the road in some places and uh, yeah I love to have these on top of my breakfast bowls again you can make blackberry compote pot maybe mix it with some other fruits and top your breakfast bowls with that or your pancakes or whatever you like to eat and they're also really yummy and crumble I picked a lot of blueberries this um, this summer so I think I'm gonna mix these with some blueberries and make a nice crumble out of that they're great like any berry in any sort of dessert or baked dish I made a sort of a layered dessert a really long time ago on my blog so I'll link that below with some nice cashew cream and a sauce that I made from blackberries and fresh blackberries and uh, yeah they're also beautiful if you like to take pictures of your food they're very aesthetically pleasing fruit but I think I've talked enough about vegetables and fruits for today I hope you've enjoyed to hear me sort of present what's in season where I am right now and all the ideas that I've shared for things that I like to make that maybe you can try out at home all the yummy vegan dishes that are available to us and yeah thank you very much for watching like I said, I hope you enjoyed. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.